Now that I've had this experience, it makes me wonder if self-publishing influencers are actually trying the products they recommend. I'm growing tired of this. Welcome to Amelia's Behind the Scenes Author Diary, an exclusive look at the behind the scenes misadventures of a 30-something mystery author. Discover how close she is to releasing her latest novel, hear exciting details about upcoming writing projects, and discover the lessons she has learned along her writing journey so you don't have to make the same mistakes. You can find the episode show notes and lots more information at authorpreneurpodcast.com forward slash podcast. Hello writers, if you've listened to the previous episodes of this podcast, you'll know that I've been struggling to finish my next novel. By now you're probably wondering what drama got in the way of me achieving my writing and publishing goals. In this show I'll share a momentous writing update. On top of this I'll discuss my fears and a surprising update on my fussy librarian book promotion and I've discovered a great tool for self-published authors at a great price. So stay tuned for all of this and much more. Just to let you know, this episode was recorded on Monday the 23rd of August, so this show is primarily me looking back at July. In the same spirit as the previous episode, I finally caught up on the show's backlog. After this show, I'm back on schedule. <laughs> If you're on YouTube, you'll notice that I've gone back to an audio-only version of the podcast. I've had to pull the plug on the video podcast episode because I couldn't do everything and something had to go. Throughout this episode, I'll be referencing tools and services that I've used. If you're interested in reading the transcript or would like links to anything that I've mentioned in the show, then check out the very long blog post or edited transcript at authorpreneurpodcast.com forward slash BTS041. And if you're new to this podcast, I want to say a huge thank you for stopping by and trying out my show. To those of you who have been faithfully listening, thank you for regularly listening in and supporting me. Your support means more to me than you know. Honestly, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I've finally achieved a goal I set for myself. At the end of the previous episode, I set a goal to finish writing the first draft of The Candidate and start my one-pass revision by the end of the month. In July, I did exactly that. Yes, I managed to finish the first draft of The Candidate. So how did I achieve this? During July, I completed 13 hours and 30 minutes of writing and added 3,364 words to the first draft. Before I finished writing The Candidate, I remembered to let my alpha reader know about the new chapters that were available to read in Hey Beta, and I waited for the feedback before I wrote the final four scenes. The reason behind this is I wanted to double check that I've achieved the goals I set in regards to the reader's response to everything they've learned so far. I wanted to avoid writing my story in the wrong direction. Upon receiving the feedback, I went through the manuscript and made edits. These edits were line edits. Before I started to write the two climactic scenes in my novella, I had to research how certain drugs would affect the body and what doses would result in a fatal overdose. After finding these answers, I brainstormed scene blocking notes and wrote scene 25. As I went along, I performed line edits with Grammarly before uploading the new scenes to Hey Beta. At this stage, my alpha reader was reading the scenes and chapters as they were made available, and then I made edits as I received feedback from my alpha reader. For this story, I started to collect feedback in a spreadsheet. Each reader's feedback is recorded in their own column next to the corresponding scene in the spreadsheet. Between writing scene 25 and 26, five days passed, and those scenes were the second heat wave in London. Once again, I found it too difficult to concentrate, let alone write. The last three scenes of the novella were written in five hours and 15 minutes across two days. As a result of writing these three scenes, I added 1,993 words to the first draft. This word count includes line edits made to the scenes before uploading them into Hey Beta, plus edits made based on feedback from my alpha reader. The final word count for the candidate at the end of the first draft was 25,000 295 words. So my short story is definitely a novella. <music> 
during July, I managed to complete 10 hours and 15 minutes of revisions on the candidate. At the end of the first draft, I felt confident that I had not overlooked any plot threads. Thus, I believe my plot was structurally sound and the character's motivations were coherent. Instead of diving into my one pass revision, I decided to hire a beta reader before starting my self edits. Over on Fiverr, I contacted a new beta reader because the one I wanted to use was currently unavailable. While I waited for the beta reader to get back to me, I made edits based on the feedback from my alpha reader for the last three scenes of the story. Before submitting my manuscript to the beta reader, I listened to my computer read back my manuscript. Then I made edits based on the mistakes I picked up during these readings. By the way, for each scene, I listened to the scene several times, especially after I made changes. In July, I managed to edit the scenes in Act 1 to Act 3 and the first two scenes in Act 4. During this time, I started to set up the vellum file for the candidate. I like to export my manuscript from vellum because I can export an RTF file that I can convert to a PDF using Word. Over in Scrivener, I don't add the subtitles, which are essentially timestamps. Instead, I add these into vellum. This creates the ticking clock feel, which is what I want my beta reader to experience. As I listened to my computer read back these scenes, I discovered and fixed a timeline issue with my story that affected four scenes. And I edited a scene and explained why the police chose not to arrest someone because in the past, I've chosen not to do stuff like this. And the readers made comments about the police investigation even though it's not a police procedural and the police investigation is not the focus of the story. This decision prompted me to write a new scene where Anwar struggled to find a French translator with the somewhat limited police resources. Naturally, I edited this scene, then listened to the computer read it back and made further edits. At this point, I felt mentally exhausted and gave myself the rest of the day off and I chose not to work on the last Friday of the month for the same reason. What I should have pointed out earlier is that I didn't give myself a break between finishing the first draft and starting my revisions. This is the main reason for my mental exhaustion. After making a few minor changes to the book cover of Missing, I decided to follow the changes through to the rest of the series, which meant redesigning the cover of Duplicity. At the same time, I made the same changes to the Ingram Spark paperback edition for Missing. I've been putting this task off because I have to recreate the cover from scratch due to previous experience with using the platform. And I've done this where I've just edited the previous book cover and it came up the, when you submit a book to Ingram Spark, it goes through a few checks and it was rejected because there was something about the cover that was misaligned. And I learned that if I just created this from scratch, it would have been easier and it would have taken less time. So, and that involves going into Ingram Spark, filling out all the requirements of the book. They send you the file to create the book cover and it's like the template for that and that's what you really need to do every time you create a new cover for a book that exists in Ingram Spark or a new book. The interesting thing about the Ingram Spark book cover sort of template was mainly a guide for the bleeds so when they chop the book you know that everything's aligned perfectly and what's going to be on the book cover actually makes it on the book cover and doesn't sort of end up in the trash and your book cover looking weird so they actually provide an ISBN barcode that you can then stick on the back portion of the cover and I really love this I wish um KDP did that but they don't they just stick it on anywhere and it would be nice if you could sort of move the barcode to a different place because the placement of my barcode on my Ingram Spark books and on the KDP print books are slightly different. One of them's in the middle and one of them's off to the lower right hand side of the book I think. Maybe it's the lower left. Sorry I don't know my left from right. Yeah don't worry I'm not driving. The roads are safe. While uploading the new covers I encountered a problem using the Ingram Spark promotional code that I should have had access to as a, as a part of my Ally membership. Let's just say that I'm a bit perplexed by my dealings with Ally. If you've heard something useful in this episode that was helpful to you and you'd like to support the show, then buy me a coffee for as little as two US dollars at buymeacoffee.com forward slash author Hay. 
For quite some time, I've been putting off doing a fussy librarian promotion, believing they were super selective about whom they accept for promotions. And to be honest, I think I got this information from quite an old source because I think back in the day when the Kindle Gold Rush was on and everyone was publishing everything and perhaps there weren't as many editors and other services that authors could get hold of to publish their works. I think maybe the standard of the books weren't as, wasn't as great as, as it is now. And I think that led them to be a little more, more fussy about the books they choose to promote to their readers and you know right rightfully so and I heard stories about them not accepting first-time authors and I've always put them in the too hard basket and never tried it so I ended up trying it anyway despite my 3.5 star average rating on the Amazon US store I was accepted for a book promotion on the 19th of July by the fussy librarian <laughs> Thanks to the conversion rate offered by Revolut, I ended up paying 30 US dollars and 50 cents for a 99 cent sale promoted to the mystery and suspense list. One thing I will say that I've learnt about these promotions is I'm tempted to say don't bother promoting your book to one of these paid sort of sites unless they segment the list because if you're going to give away a book for free you need the promoter to be sending that book purely to people who read in your genre otherwise you're just going to get everybody and you could potentially get negative book reviews because they've brought a free book in a genre they don't particularly like but anyway back to the scheduled program. I've had a bit of time to think since my last podcast episode and I've decided to go back to sharing the downloads and sales that I've received on the days that I promote my books on the various retailers regardless of the terms and conditions. Honestly it feels like I'm hiding something otherwise and I'm not strictly sharing screenshots of my dashboards or saying all the sales figures and data. On the day of the promotion I received three sales on Amazon and three sales on Barnes and Noble. That's not a great result. I believe the re- readers of this site must crave free books instead of 99 cent deals. So maybe a free promotion might have done better on the Fussy Librarian site and email lists. Or maybe my worst fear is valid. Perhaps my 3.5 star rating is putting readers off buying. There's one thing I know for certain. I wish I did a bit more research into whether a 99 cent or free promotion performs better on the Fussy Librarian. After doing said research, I've discovered based on the evidence shared by other authors that free performs better than 99 cents with the Fussy Librarian list. There's a part of me that's tempted to do a free promotion with the Fussy Librarian on the same book to compare the results. I'll keep you posted as to whether I do that or not. After feeling frustrated with the service provided by Hey Beta, I went searching for a new beta reader platform, hoping to find something that combined the features of Hey Beta with beta books. For those of you who are not aware, last month or the month before, I experienced issues with Hey Beta after discovering that you can't move chapters around in their rising star plan or any of their plans really. The plan is 70 US dollars plus taxes. For that price, you can't move chapters around or in insert new chapters into an existing story without uploading the entire manuscript again and possibly losing the reader comments. On top of that the reader can't make inline comments so there's so many features that you don't get with this and for the price I sort of think what am I paying for? I know creating the code for a program like this would take a, a lot of time and I appreciate that because the person sitting next to me in my office he does this for a living and he spends a lot of time doing this so I get it you need to pay your engineers but there's so few features that I sort of feel like it's the the price isn't justified based on my experience so that's the bad news now for the good news I've discovered a new beta reading software that provides you with the ability to move chapters around insert questionnaires at strategic points and have inline comments and it looks great on mobile devices did I mention that you get these features with the free plan yeah it's free. And this is what I don't understand about the Hey Beta Reader um, program is that they're charging you this huge fee for something you should get in like a free plan because it's got none of the bells and whistles you really need to get effective 
feedback from a beta reader. Before I go any further, the free plan only allows for one manuscript with three readers and one team member or author. If you're a first time author, this is good news. Unless you're a crazy person like me and have four manuscripts on the go, you don't need to upgrade quickly. And by the way, I have four manuscripts under two pen names. So I couldn't really use the free plan with this. I would have to upgrade. You get time to try out the service properly before upgrading, which is great news because as a first time author, you're not made of money. There's no creepy 14 day trial because 14 days isn't enough time to know whether you want to use a product like this because it's beta reading because you're because people are beta reading your book and they're providing feedback and if you're doing it in real time where you're uploading chapter by chapter 14 days isn't enough to know when whether you like the product or the product is going to work for you so what's the name of this service you ask it's called betareader.io what bothers me about products like hey beta is the service came recommended with a discount by a well-known podcast in the self-publishing space space. Now that I've had this experience, it makes me wonder if self-publishing influencers are actually trying the products they recommend. I'm growing tired of this. My feelings around practices like this drives me to be honest about the services I try, no matter how I feel, either positive or negative. It bothers me when I hear other podcasters say that they won't share a negative review or experience about a product because they don't want to burn bridges. But what happened to being honest and saying this didn't work for me for these reasons. What's so bad about that? In light of this, I'm going to create a comparison guide for these three beta reading software platforms after I've had a chance to new to use this new service for a while. I'll let you know in a future episode of the podcast when this blog post is published and it will be a couple of months away because I don't want to try it for a week and then create the blog post because it's not fair. I've used Hey Beta and Beta Books for quite quite a while and I've got a really good idea of what it's actually like to use these with real readers. So I want to do the same thing with betareader.io and then let you know. And I'm going to try it with on the free plan, like one book, one author name, and that's it. I won't rate it on the paid plan because not everyone will can afford to use these paid plans and some of them are just priced far too high for what you get. But anyway, rant over. In July, I hit another milestone with La Villain book covers. At the start of the month, I secured another pre-made logo client. Someone purchased a pre-made logo at my new pricing structure. And I also designed a new trio of cozy mystery pre-made covers and a romantic comedy book cover. Once again, I tried to set up a store on Facebook. Naturally, they rejected my store for mysterious reasons and offered no explanation even after I asked. I'm tired of playing the Facebook game. At least tell me what I've done wrong so I can fix it. Isn't this how customer service is supposed to work? But back to my Levillain book covers milestone. In July, I had my first pre-made book cover client. Over on Facebook in a book cover marketplace group I sold a set of three library and cat themed cozy mystery book covers. I'm officially a book cover designer and not a book cover designer dabbler if that's a thing. Sorry, there are a lot of yays in this. There are several things I've been excited about in July and I feel like I've finally done something this year. It's taken me to get to July to feel like I've achieved something and it's bizarre. So that's all of the tasks I completed in terms of writing, book marketing and email marketing. In August, I want to finish my one pass revision of the candidate and be ready to submit the novella to my editor. The next episode of the podcast will be another diary episode where I will continue to discuss my writing and book marketing endeavours. If you have any questions or have tips on book marketing that you'd love to share with me, please share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for listening and happy reading and writing, everybody. Thank you for listening to Amelia's Behind the Scenes Author Diary. You can find the episode show notes, back catalogue episodes and lots more information at authorpreneurpodcast.com forward slash podcast. I'm your host Amelia and I'll see you in the next Behind the Scenes Author Diary episode.